Ms. Alex Yam. Mr. Chairman, we live in a pluralistic world and Singapore, perhaps more than any other country, defines this measure. According to the Religious Identity Index published by the Pew Research Centre, Singapore ranks first out of 232 countries surveyed with the greatest religious diversity. With diversity comes with it the vibrancy of our community life, different religious groups celebrating festivals, intermingling of communities and living together in harmony. Yet diversity also means that fault lines are never too far from the surface, which is why Singapore has always been careful in ensuring that these fault lines do not rupture. This means much hard work. We must first recognize that when we talk about religious harmony in Singapore, it's not just skin deep. We have not achieved the harmony simply by talking about how similar we are. All religions, after all, aim for the good of man. But also, in acknowledging that we do have differences and accepting those differences. As society becomes more affluent, correspondingly a sizable number also turn to greater religious life to find meaning to their lives. We must be careful about how we balance our pride in our own faith and at the same time not denigrate the beliefs of others in that process. I am therefore heartened by President Halima's announcement of an international conference on social cohesion in December 2018. Having been involved in interreligious dialogue, I am proud that Singapore is often cited as an example of how we can be diverse yet undivided. Could the Ministry therefore share more details of this conference and what it means for Singapore? How do we promote our way of religious harmony and also learn from the examples of others in challenging the issues of identity politics? Like many Singaporeans, I go to my place of worship regularly. Every Sunday in church, I see large crowds of fellow believers gathering throughout the entire day. In our mosque, our Muslim brethren throng for Friday prayers. Temples are packed during key festivals as well. We often go about our worship without much thought for safety or security. We take it as a given. Yet we only need to look around us in the region to realize how starkly that religious organizations are obvious soft targets for terrorist attacks. While SG Secure has helped to raise the awareness of the need to be alert and be prepared, are our religious organizations prepared to handle such situations? And who can they turn to to seek help to develop or to strengthen their plans. We must always engage each other in dialogue, but it is in showing and experiencing our care for one another that we can truly achieve harmony.